Howdy folks, today uh, we are going to discuss grouping and binning of nicer spectral data when doing spectral analysis of uh, nicer uh, observational data. If you have any questions throughout this process, feel free to ask in the comment section down below. Additionally, if you find this video useful at any point, consider liking the video or sharing it with a colleague so that others can more quickly and easily get the help that they need when it comes to grouping and binning NICER spectral data. Additionally, I want to preface that I'm not affiliated with the NICER mission, NASA, the Goddard Space Flight Center, or HESARC. I'm an independent researcher who takes advantage of NICER data as well as HESOFT to facilitate my own research of neutron stars, pulsars, magnetars, or, or really just to sum it up, uh, compact objects. This video tutorial and discussion is going to be based off of this optimal binning tutorial from the uh, NICER data analysis threads. Credit for this tutorial and everything should go to uh, the individuals who wrote up this page as well as the acknowledged uh, Ethan Parrington. And additionally, you should check out the AMA paper referenced on this page for optimal binning of X-ray spectra by Castro and Bleeker, uh, who wrote the theoretical framework for the program that we are going to use today. So as you can see right now, here is some spectral data I loaded in. This is actually a spectral data from Cassiopeia A, which is a supernova remnant, okay? And uh, you can see already I've chosen this spectrum particularly because of all of these features that we can see in the spectrum itself right now. But I want to start by discussing why we might decide to group or bin our data. It's not something that you have to do, but if you're going to be doing any sort of spectrum analysis, i.e. model fitting, you're going to probably want to group or bin your data somewhat so that you can get really, really nice statistical interpretations of how well your modeling is actually going. To better understand this, let's take a look at the broad iron line of Cassiopeia A. So I went ahead and I ignored everything from 0 to 6 keV, and you can see this pretty, pretty big, sharp hump right here. This is our broad iron line, and in fact, we can actually zoom in on that a little bit better. So here we go. Here is a much better look at our broad iron line, and you can see that we there's a whole bunch of data points here with relatively reasonable error bars, okay? When we're fitting a model through this, you can see that there's so many error bars here that if we're if our model is just ever so slightly off from these error bars, our statistic may actually uh, a reduced chi-square statistic may actually indicate this is not as good of a fit as we might think. So we're going to want to group or bin this data. So back in the terminal window, you can see that I have a spectrum file here available. I have the response file or the RMF and the ARF file generated. If you need help generating those, I previously did a video on that, which I will link in the description down below as well. But we're going to be looking to create something called uh, an optimally binned spectrum file. And I already have one generated here and I want to show you what it looks like before we generate another one to examine. So here is our binned data, and as you can see, we have many, many uh, less data points. But fitting a model through these data points is going to be a lot easier. You can see that the iron line is still here, but statistically speaking, uh, we're going to get a much better statistical interpretation of how well our modeling is actually going of features like this iron line. So to do this, we're going to use a tool called FT Group PHA. Then what we're going to do is we are going to type in the path to our spectrum file. Then we're going to type in uh, the path and the name of the output file we want written. 
And then we're going to type in group type equals opt. And this is going to bin your data uh, based upon the most optimal binning uh, that is detailed, again, in this theoretical framework paper by Castra and Bleeker. I recommend that you go and read through that because it is a little bit interesting. So if we hit enter, you're going to see this annoying little result right here. And that's because we have the response file generated. So there have been a handful of individuals who uh, have told me that they have followed this tutorial in the nicer data analysis threads and it doesn't work. Well, that's because uh, creating RMF and ARF files for nicer uh, data is something that is a little bit uh, newer here. So what we're going to do is we are going to use our previous response file and we can go ahead and type in the same command as before but right instead of group type we're going to type in the command resp file equals and then we're going to type in the path to our RMF file. We can hit enter and everything should run. Here we have the new optimally binned uh, spectrum that we had from before. So uh, we can load that into XPEC and it should be exactly the same as this one I showed you earlier. And just like that, now you can see virtually the same exact thing. And actually we can take a look in the XPEC terminal and you can see that I'm using the opt1 file and before we were using the uh, just the opt file. Now I don't really need two of these so we're going to get rid of the one that we just created. Okay so last we can type in one other command we can type in the same command as before but we can instead do a, a minimum number of data points per bin. Now the reason why you might want to not use the optimal binning is because you have a large number of data points and you really want there to be a bare minimum amount of data points per bin. You can type in group type equals opt min instead of just opt and then you can type in group scale equals let's say 10 and this is going to bin your data with a minimum of 10 data points per bin. So we can hit enter right here and now we can load that file into XPEC. And here you can see that this spectrum looks very very similar to what we did before but you can see now that we're grouping these uh, you, well you probably can't see actually um, but now this is being grouped with a bare minimum of 10 counts per bin. So ultimately that is how you group or bin spectral data, uh, nicer spectral data with uh, the optimal binning technique using FT group PHA. Ultimately you don't have to group or bin your spectral data. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to do that. Take a look at the statistics that you're getting when you're doing your spectral modeling and if they seem a little bit out of whack then you probably should do a little bit of binning. I'd recommend doing optimal binning first and then if that doesn't necessarily work maybe try some uh, minimal uh, minimum optimal binning but you could always go back and use things like group PHA or even if you really wanted to you could bin that data within XPEC although I wouldn't particularly advise that but if you have any questions about uh, grouping or binning nice respectful data feel free to ask away in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer your question as quickly and as best as I can given that we will be doing that in a uh, YouTube comment section. But thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again next time.